Welcome to next game's game overview video of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. We will start with speaking about what point in history this game takes place, as well as where it takes place along the Assassin's Creed timeline, as well as touch upon briefly the story that you're going to see in this game. We will then branch off into all the aspects of the game, including gameplay, bosses, the expansions that are in the game. After that, I'll just briefly touch upon several aspects of the game that you may find interesting, including what level you can get to and what those levels get you, the skills that you can achieve throughout the game and what those look like, some of the gear that you can get, the ship upgrades that you can achieve, and then I'll just finish with going through some of the objectives they set for you throughout the game, such as killing the cultist members, mercenaries, and battling in the arena. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is the 11th main title in the series. Here we have noted all 11 of those titles, along with all the other spin-offs, and the upcoming title, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, throughout this November 2020. The first game in the series took place in 1191, and with the exception of two spin-offs that take place right before that one, all future games in the series will move forward from this timeline until we get to Syndicate, which takes place in 1868. The series then went back to its origins in, well, Assassin's Creed Origins, which took place during 49 BC, during the reign of Cleopatra and the founding of the Crete. Now, Odyssey takes our origin story back even further to the Peloponnesian War in 431 BC. Here you play the role of Cassandra or Alexios and help either Athens or Sparta gain a foothold in the region while taking on the Cult of Cosmos. Unlike other games in the series, this one takes place right before the Creed, so do not expect to have the level of Assassin's influence that you are used to seeing in the series. Instead, this game is more of a straight fighter with Assassin's influences that focuses on the story and our main character as it progresses through this rich history-filled world while meeting and working with such greats as Socrates. Now as you finish the game, there are some direct tie-ins to your story in Origins which really makes this part one of the Creed's origin story, with Origins being part two. This November, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will be released and take place over 1300 years later in the 9th century. Both Odyssey and Origins should provide a great foundation for where they are taking the series in Valhalla. Make sure you check back on this channel after Valhalla comes out as I plan to release guides on it similar to the ones that I've done for Odyssey. Assassin's Creed Odyssey uses many of the same gameplay mechanics as Assassin's Creed Origins, including the radial compass. It's used to offer access to eight abilities on alternating ability bars and four ranged abilities. You are assisted by Icarus, your trusty golden eagle, who helps you survey the landscape, spot landmarks, treasure, and highlight and harass enemies. The present day story of this title takes place through the eyes of Leia Poussin, who is introduced in Assassin's Creed Origins. The story will touch upon the creation of the Pieces of Eden by the Isu, further making this truly part one of the origin story of Assassin's Creed. The game plays very much like a traditional RPG with dialogue choice options, branching quest, multiple possible endings, romance opportunities, and the abilities to select your starting character's gender. The world for the game is massive, encompassing over 100 square miles, and if you take the time to complete all the side quests and the things that you can do in this game and what it has to offer, you can really take quite a bit of time to finish everything. My first playthrough on Nightmare Mode took 240 hours on the save game, so you will definitely get your money's worth on this one. Note that you can finish the game much quicker if you stick to just the main story and ignore the abundance of side quests and quest hubs that occur throughout the game. Now the game has the standard human bosses that you will encounter as part of the story, but there is also a mythic creature aspect to the game in which you fight the Sphinx, the Cyclops, the Minotaur, Medusa, and several Isu gods as well as more creations that they have created. Many of these can pose quite the challenge, especially on Nightmare difficulty, so be sure to check out my guides for help on how to defeat them. The game has two expansions, which arguably are as good as the game itself. The first expansion is Legacy of the First Blade, which serves to tie Odyssey into the Creed and Origins timeline. It takes place on the same map as the main game, 
so you will be revisiting many of the same areas you have already cleared if you have already cleared the map before finishing the main story like I had done. The second expansion is The Fate of Atlantis, which goes into Atlantis and the Isu. This expansion changes the game in many ways and gives you several new abilities and accessories as well as new maps, including maps to Elysium, Atlantis, and the Underworld, delving into the mysteries of the first civilization. Here we have the ability menu in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, broken into three sections, Hunter, Warrior, and Assassin. Along the bottom are the baseline abilities that you can acquire as you gain levels throughout the game. Each baseline ability has its own button assignments or activation conditions. On the right is your ability compass, which rotates between two different ability bars, allowing you to slot eight abilities in total for use at any time. On your left is your ranged ability compass, which allows you to slot four hunter abilities that can be used at any time. Now there are a ton of abilities in this game, and here I'm showing you some of my favorites, which include Shadow Assassination, Rush Assassination, Shadow Assassin, and Hero Strike, all of which can be found underneath the Assassin Tree. The Assassin's Tree has a total of 13 abilities that you can get, and those can be upgraded a total of 24 times, plus an additional 4 Isu upgrades once you get to the Atlantis expansion. Now Fury of the Bloodline is the ability that I suggest you always get underneath the Warrior skill line that has 12 abilities, 26 possible upgrades, and 4 Isu upgrades. I also recommend you always get the Overpower attacks, as this is a very useful way to link all of your attacks together. Now underneath the Hunter skill tree, I always recommend you get the Predator Shot ability, which will make anyone a great archer. Underneath this skill tree, there are 11 possible abilities, 24 upgrades, and 2 Isu upgrades once you get to Atlantis. Now the maximum level in Assassin's Creed Odyssey is 99, but after you reach that, you can continue to get mastery levels so that you can literally level indefinitely. In fact, if you were to try to max out all 72 mastery levels, you would be level 1539. Going ahead and scrolling through all of the mastery levels that you can get here, as you can see, you can put 20 different points into each level. Each time you level up, you get one point. So as you can see, this could definitely take you some time if you actually eventually did want to cap out your character. When you get to this point in the game, it's obviously unrealistic to expect that you're going to get 1,440 additional levels. So instead, try and pick a skill tree that you're going to focus in and the specific build that is the top build that you use most frequently and try and make that build excel by adding different bonuses through these mastery levels. Now that we've discussed abilities throughout the game, let's go ahead and move on to equipment. There's a wide variety of weapons and armor available in Assassin's Creed. Let's start with the weapons first. You have the options of using swords, daggers, heavy blunt weapons, heavy bladed weapons, staves, and spears. Each of them offering different overpower abilities and different moves that you can use to take out your enemy. Now additionally, there's of course a wide variety of bows that you can use and six different kinds of arrows. Normal arrows, paralyzing arrows, poison, fire, explosive arrows, and death arrows doing the most damage. Now, let's move on to the armor. You have a headpiece, hands, body, legs, and feet, just like in most RPGs. Now, the ranking of this armor comes in three different flavors. The first is blue, which they will actually refer to as rare armor. This comes with two default slots and one additional slot that you can use to engrave. Next is epic armor, which comes with three slots and an additional slot to engrave. And the best is Legendary Armor, who comes with two slots, a set bonus for using the entire set, and then you can also engrave them as well. Now, the bonuses and numbers that you can put on the Legendary or Gold pieces far exceeds that you can put on the, on the Epic or Rare pieces. So after you start getting some of your first Legendary sets, you can just go ahead and deconstruct all of your Epic and Rare, or sell them to an NPC, depending on what resource you need the most of at the time. 
Now let's quickly discuss loadouts. There are five total ones that you can buy throughout the game, each of which has its own set of armor and weapons that you can use for that loadout, therefore making it very easy to change between different pieces of gear. As you can see here, I have one specifically for weapon damage, one specifically for ranged damage, one for poison, one for fire, and the one you see me most frequently in, my assassin setup. As you can see here at the bottom, the different numbers that you do in the different categories of the skill tree are all shown for each different gear set right here. Next, let's talk about our ship and its upgrades. Now you don't spend nearly as much time at sea in Assassin's Creed Odyssey as you do in Black Flag, but you do spend more time at sea than you do in pretty much any other Assassin's Creed game. So you definitely do not want to neglect this area of the game. When it comes to upgrades, I recommend upgrading all of these things together as you progress through the game as they will get substantially more expensive as you go. For your arsenal, you have arrows, javelins, fire braziers, and at the very end of the game you will get a flamethrower that does some devastating damage. To increase your weapon damage, you can increase your javelin damage directly, your arrow damage directly, or your battering ram damage that you can use when you charge other ships. You can also increase the endurance of your hull, how quickly you row, and your crew's armor. Now on the right hand side you can select some special lieutenants that will not only add some stat bonuses to your ship, will also assist you in the chance that you do board another vessel. You can also change the look of your ship and its sails, the figurehead that stands at the front of your ship, and the crew that sails with you. Of course down here at the bottom shows all of the general stats for your ship, the damage it can do, and how much health it has. Next, let's move on to the mercenaries menu. Now in all previous Assassin's Creed titles, when you killed an innocent or did anything that was against the law, you quite often would be desynchronized, meaning that you would die and have to start over again from the last save point. However, in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they have added the mercenary system, which makes it so instead you get a bounty placed on your head. Depending on the level of bounty placed on you, you will have up to five mercenaries tracking you down and trying to kill you to get your bounty. Next, let's move on to the cultist section. Unlike the mercenary section which lists enemies looking for you, the cultist section shows the people that you are trying to uncover and assassinate in the Cult of Cosmos and the Order of the Ancients in the expansion. That will be it for the game overview video of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I hope you found that helpful and that you try the game out. Here is yet another example of one of the many things you can do in this game. This is an arena battle against another champion. I've done guides and videos on every boss in the game, so if you have any problems with any of them, be sure to check them out on my channel. And be sure to check out my channel when Assassin's Creed Valhalla comes out in approximately one month. Thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.